Hello and welcome to the Visionary Chronicles. Today we're going to talk about another chapter in the book, The Visionary Brand, The Success Formula Behind the World's Most Visionary Brands. Um, thank you again. I say it again and again, but I truly do thank you for those that have purchased the book, making it an Amazon bestseller. And also a reader's favorite award winner for best nonfiction marketing genre business book. Have you ever wondered why some brands succeed while most fail? You know, it's one of the reasons why I wrote the book. And one of the questions that I always get, whether with Liquid Mind or people that reach out to me after reading the book, to get an idea of this formula. This formula of success. Why do these visionary brands succeed? Well, so many. You know, they say in the first five years, 80% fail. Next five years, 80% of the, what's left has failed. So it leaves very few at the end of the tunnel uh, to succeed. But much of this evolution um, and the ability to, the, to adapt is why they succeed or why they fail. So today we're going to talk about this, this new age. And this new age has to do with this generation that we're in, this generational change. And I call it be distinct or become extinct. And I love the quote by Tom Peters, which is pretty much verbatim to that quote, is distinct or extinct. I love it. And really in the world that we live in with this short, short, I'm saying short attention span and getting shorter every day, you know, it could be three, four seconds. How are you going to be distinct? And if you're not distinct, just become extinct. So this generational change, what I call it, has forced brands to either evolve or expire. <clears throat> Evolution is, is what I call this kind of uh, less disruptive cousin of this revolutionary change, which is disruptive. So realizing a product, and I say realizing, meaning commercializing, a product that sets the standard for generations is, is always your goal. You always want to be disruptive. Uh, but I've talked many times about this progression, this incremental change on current inline programs or product or services, whatever it is, to an innovation, to a true disruption. And I talked, I just released a podcast on, on Ford. And it's kind of a case study in that progression on their EV market. You know, they've tried to move from an incremental change to a disruption. And it was a failure in the beginning, and now they're having to adjust their strategy and their vision. So again, realizing a product that sets a standard is, is always the goal. And still, with this goal, few brands bring this vision to what I call reality. And evolution can be just as powerful for a brand's ongoing strategy. And this evolution, I call it, is really also at adaptation. And versionary brands can learn to create or adapt products that are superior in design, fit, form, function, to satisfy this expectations of the marketplace for the next generation, what I call this new age. And many of you see it with technology companies, the AI generation, and they're truly revolutionary. Things that we've never been able to use before. Tools that we've never been able to use before. But when we talk about true brands, these CPG brands on product, many times they kind of get lost in this faking great technology and thinking that this is an evolution of their product. Um, there was one recently that was a gene company that said AI form fitting, form fit function on AI generated genes. I said, well... That's really not a, an AI that it's, may help again with your stock price, but it's certainly not going to help sell more product. And I think people can see through that right now. So truly, you have to be authentic when you talk about this superior in design, fit, form, and function, service, whatever it happens to be for this new age. And you have to be continually adapting, evolving, I call it. And it's a little bit different word than innovation because innovation for people can be static. And that's true. Innovation can be static. It can be an improvement to a product, but when we talk about evolution and adaptation that we're talking about with the new age today, today is you have to adapt, continually adapt. 
So this new age is growing up with technological advances that move literally at light speed. Um, they've never seen a LP record player, although I will say um, that a lot of them do like vinyl. <laughs> My kids still love vinyl and they love, uh, you know, the, the maybe not a CD or a cassette player. They just love the old school vinyl, which is kind of cool to turntable um, vinyl. Um, but there's an appreciation for this. It's not anything that's a technological advance. It becomes kind of this appreciation of the past, not of the future. So um, they can appreciate this simplicity, simplicity back in the day and the culture that these creations represented, but it's not representative of the future. And it's something that they may listen to and appreciate because it's something from the past that actually is different. But this appreciation is the artistry, what I call the artistry of, of visionary brands to bring this new age to product, thought and creation behind products themselves providing this what I call valuable function to everyday life, making our life easier. This simple sophistication that they bring to our life. You know, the beauty is in the simplicity of their designs, but the absolute power it puts into their hands. You know, those visionary brands that embrace these dynamic ideas. Dynamic is a different word too. People use the word innovation. They use the word disruption. And those are to a certain degree static. But when we look at dynamic, you look at evolution, you look at adaptation. These are moving words that you need to have as a brand in order to continue to be visionary. These are the ideas that change the world and are best positioned to satisfy the needs of the future generations. So you look back and let's just take a look at back at some of the products that we interact with daily the ones that made our daily lives easier right it's uh the brands are still around today and when you look at they've adapted over the years or they other failed to do so in the case of um, i had a case study that i talked about in a previous podcast about the walkman you know you sold 20 million units over a 20-year period but there was no evolution it's just a product that was ahead of its time that eventually became behind its time and eventually went away and so without changing their foundational values, positioning, or principles, you know, these brands wouldn't be as successful as they are. The Apples of the world, the Nikes of the world, and their story's great, right? You'll listen to Air, the movie Air. You get to get a little bit of a taste of what they went through in order to be successful, what they committed to. And you continually saw in the movie Air the principles that the shoe dog had and the principles that Nike had and the, and the passion that everybody had around making this brand successful. So this can be a tricky balance. I understand that. You know, these values, this positioning, these principles for companies, and, and many of them, you know, lie in ruins due to the inability to adapt to what comes their way. And I get it. There's a shortcut to failure, but there's not a shortcut to success. Anticipation, judgment, transparent decision-making are markers of successful brands. Again, I'll say anticipation, judgment, and transparent decision-making are markers of successful brands that have brought this reality of these great products and ideas to life, to these generational products that we use today. So there's two ways to survive these generational shifts. And... The first is evolution, incremental improvements, updating current core products. It's a continual and dynamic evolution of your brand and your products. The second, which encompasses innovation and disruption, reimagine the way something's done or creating a new way. Think of how cool that is, right? You know, we used to listen to record players. Now we have a thousand songs in our pocket and now we've got unlimited or infinity of songs on iTunes. So in many ways, the processes are very intuitive. You know, could there be an easier way? And that's always the question we whiteboard with Liquid Mind and the brands that we work with. And is, is there a better way? And this is traditionally done in the ideation phase with Liquid Mind. And it really whiteboards out a lot of opportunities. And when we talk about adaptation, and I talk about this on the Power Triad and also Product Ideation uh, podcast as well. 
is that when you whiteboard things, adaptation means not just adapting your current core product, but it means adapting other technologies that are not available in your product category. And I go back to the Nike story with the, the Nike Flyknit, where I talk about what was the inspiration behind the Flyknit. It was suspension bridges. They saw the designers went out into the real world, got outside the four walls of their building and saw suspension bridges and felt that would be a great foundation for a knit footwear. And it changed footwear forever. And we still wear those shoes and they're still the foundation of predominantly most of the shoes that we wear today. So, so again, in many ways, this is very intuitive. It's a, it's a better way to know your customer. It's easier to find solution to everyday life issues. Sometimes these solutions, uh, they never know we're an issue, right? In, in, and I go way back on this one. <laughs> but uh, when you listen to Henry Ford, the true visionary of Ford, when he said, hey, if I would have asked my customers what they were wanting, they would have told me a faster horse and cars would have never evolved to where they're at today. Now, I'm not saying you can't ask for your customer's opinion, but let's be real with the evolution and disruption. They don't even know what they need. So you have to look at it from the not only a incremental to progression to innovation to eventual disruption. So the survivor mentality, I call it, drives these great brands to execute against a backdrop of change relentlessly, relentless change, relentless execution. You know, having the ability to see the future uh, for your customers. It's an interesting concept, right? You say, well, you know, you ask your customers, what do you want? And they'll go, well, I don't know. What's the future look like? Well, that's why they're looking to you. Having the ability to see the future needs of your customers core to being able to thrive from generation to generation. It's just the key fact. The past is always accurate and it usually leads the future. Great brands are the ones that are still with us today have this survival, what I call instinct or this mechanism built into their culture and they're passionate. I mean, you go into some of these brands that have been around for generations, they don't have to fight for people to come want to work for their company. They have people lined up around the block wanting to work for their company because they understand the culture. They're committed to their culture and they're passionate about the future of their brand. So this mechanism is built into their culture and they're passionate about it, creating and recreating. You know, while their products are being used daily, these creators have already moved on to the next breakaway idea. And what I mean by that is that we never worried about competition at Oakley because Jim said, hey, let's just move on to the next breakaway technology because people will get it that people are following. Skechers follows. It's fine. They're a billion dollar company and that's their strategy and their price point is their competitive weapon not their technology or their culture. And by being moved on to the next generation, breakaway idea, that's the leadership principle. Always be thinking, always be different, I, I say, is, is a leadership principle. You know, if adopted, you know, we'll always look at others to lead in your industry. And when you look at the leadership principle of always be thinking, always be different, if adopted, and that is really passionate around the foundation of what your brand is all about, you know, others will look. And that's why you have people lined up around the block wanting to work for your brand or your company. The competitors, as a result of this, and this continual pounding into the ground in this strategy around always be thinking, always be different, always find a way to grab market share, you're pounding your competition into the ground. So, you want to make sure that these competitors have the follower principle. You know, what is Oakley doing? What is Nike doing? What is Tesla doing? You know, always look to take the lead and your voice will be the one others will follow. Okay, so again, always look for your brand to take the lead within your industry. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. But that's why you have a point of difference. That's why you command premium price points. That's why you have the community you do. It's why you have the culture that you do. So it's always look to take the lead and your voice will be the one that others will follow. And, and by the way, the community that we're in today or the environment we're in today is that people follow great brands. 
bands that are committed to their culture, brands that are committed to their product and community com committed to finding a different way of making their life easier, making them a better runner, making them a better football player, basketball player, um, the ability to, to calculate things quicker, build presentations faster, more efficiency. So staying ahead of this curve is tricky though. I get it. It is. It's very tricky. The brands that we work with Liquid Mind and the brands that I've been with personally, you know, we were always in the lead at Adidas, TaylorMade, uh, K-Swiss, whatever brand it happened to be, that we always look to take the lead. Staying ahead of this curve is really tricky one to maneuver. You know, breaking too hard and risk avoidance. Others will catch up. Coming in too hard, risk ignorance. You know, so you'll crash and burn. Simply other, you know, others will just follow. They're just a commodity brand. So your choice. And either you want that first mover advantage and a key point of difference. You know, ultimately, it's best to strike a balance between revolution and evolution is what I say. You know, I'll hear these brand leaders in these whiteboard meetings with, with Liquid Mind where they say, hey, we always want to be the leader in the industry. Well, that's great. If you've got a breakaway product, you should have generation, generational lead above other, above, beyond others in your category. So as a result of this, you don't need to have a revolution every single time you build a great product in your platform. You've got an evolution of that idea, bring it down the supply and demand curve and satisfy all markets and don't apologize for that. So if you have a generational lead over your competitors, you've mastered that product life cycle. Compression and pushing the demand curve in your favor through ongoing product creation and innovation pipelines being built. Inevitably, you sustain this for an extended period of time as a company and as a brand. But I got a word of caution for you as you're riding, riding this innovation pipeline wave. You know, you have to understand the challenges of this strategy will pose challenges to your team over the long term. You know, where does the next great idea come from? You know, where, how many iterations can we do on this? Eventually, you need to dump some of your most popular products in order to bring in the new on the front end of the innovation curve. So consistently producing impactful products, reducing commercialization timelines, providing value to everyday lives of your community, your advocates, add significant pressure to your product team and your brand as a whole. You know, but integrated correctly, this pressure adds energy. It's really cool to see with brands how it just adds this significant energy to your brands when you've got this vision and the vision is being executed and you have the greatest products on the planet and everybody's adopting it and your community loves you. So that's why you never want to take shortcuts in your success path. The journey that you take is a journey. Appreciate the journey, but then also appreciate who came along on the ride with you. With the wind at your back and a clear runway ahead. The visionary brand, and that's what you're achieving, would set a course for others to follow. And that's really the key. Nothing wrong with imitation. You know, you look at Picasso, you look at the great artists of the world. You know, imitation is not bad. It just has to match with what your vision is. And if it pushes you along, makes you better, makes you greater, makes you more powerful, makes you grab more market share, then by all means, adopt it. Generational change, you know, adoption of your creations and the passion for the brand, you know, drives teams. You know, this is what breeds, and I call this breed success. It's in your bloodlines. It's in your passion inside the minds of your team and flows through your brand itself. And the next one we looked at was disruptive revolution. So we had evolution, we had revolution. You know, those who create a revolution change your world. You know, the difference between innovators and imitators is a disruptive revolution, I call it. You know, it's always easier to pursue evolu revo evolutionary products than it is revolutionary, believe me. Um, it's very difficult. But both are needed. You know, you, you need the Skechers of the world and you need the Nikes of the world. But only one can be classified as truly innovative. And that's where you want to be because you're authentic. If you're an imitator, not an innovator, you cannot be authentic. And it's okay. It's okay. You know, if you don't invent the technology, just make it cheaper or something that they can adapt to that makes it cheaper rather for the community that they sell to, the commodity community, that's fine. That's needed. 
that's on the back end of the supply and demand curve, and that's really not where you want to be. So being disruptive in this new age involves combining different pieces beyond great products and seamless commercial commercialization of their product execution. All of these save money. All of these are a experience that your community expects from you. So never lose sight of, and, and I say one of the most frustrating designers in the world are those concept car designers. And I bring this up and they probably hate me for this, but when you look at concept car designers, they have these, and I'm, I, I am the mo biggest advocate of these concept cars because I think what they do is beautiful and you put it up on the board, the lines that they do, but it's frustrating for me and it's frustrating for them because it never becomes realized unless you work for Lamborghini. So it's really one of those where you look at these innovators and, and disruptors in commercialization execution, bringing vision to reality, you know, disruption in culture, service disruption and processes, you know, each one of these can, can be revolutionary if it substantially improves upon the current status quo that people live day to day. So one aspect needed for disruptive evolution is your brand advocate, ongoing, proactive, involved, combined with steady stream of new adopters. You know, new adopters could be through your community, it could be through advocates, whatever it happens to be. They're proactively on the front end of your supply and demand curve, adopting your innovative products and building word of mouth through authentication and use of the product. That's a huge piece. So losing sight of what's essential for each of these groups is a formula for a disaster, meaning that there's a process flow to being in innovative, bringing product to reality. I always say a design or an idea is only as good as it is on the board until you commercialize it. So visionary brands are constantly, passionately, passionately embracing their community, both those who are current members and those who are not yet. So embracing this disruption also means maximizing the flow of innovative products, you know, realizing it through your creative engine that you built, this product pipeline of innovation. So each product you build has to be a building block for ongoing relationship beyond the product. And I always say, Provide value beyond the product. Now, that could be an add-on. It could be an incremental product, whatever it is, making people better with the product that you supply to them. And it could be a product. It could be CPG. It could be service, whatever it is. And it must be designed to support a lifestyle that brings your customers into the brand, engaging and talking through your products and becoming a loyal part of your community authentically. You know, this community then provides a singular and collective voice embracing what the brand stands for and proactively let others know of the passion for its creations. That's a huge part of being an innovative brand and satisfying the next generation. So we go back to the beginning of what I was discussing is the evolution of a brand for this new age, continually adapting, understanding that innovation can be static. Disruptive can be static, but adaptation and evolution are not, but they can include innovation and disruption. So the strategy of disruptive revolution is a part of a new age of generational product. Adoption through lifestyle enhancement. So when you look at, I'll say that again, the strategy of disruptive revolution is a part of the new age of generational product adoption through lifestyle enhancement. And that can be add-ons, it could be value beyond product, whatever it happens to be. So brought to life through products and positioning, this is a really powerful strategy. I don't care if you're an entrepreneurial brand, I don't care if you're an iconic, multi-billion dollar brand, whatever it happens to be, but this pipeline of innovation, this continual adapt adaptation an evolution of your brand and products, but sticking to your vision and your principles of what you stand for is key to your success. So providing this continual value to the end user through evolutions in their daily life and revolutionary leaps ahead in how they live their lives, utilize your product and engage with your brand. So 
Thank you again for listening to the Visionary Chronicles. I say stay true, stay authentic, be different, and be great. But most of all, enjoy the journey along the way. As always, I appreciate your time uh, listening to the Visionary Chronicles today. Feel free to reach out to me at Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, at liquidmindsite.com, L-I-Q-U-I-D-M-I-N-D-S-I-T-E.com. Also, if you go to liquidmindsite.com, you have questions, you would just like to meet one member of our team. Um, we are virtual before virtual was a thing. Um, so we have, uh, you'll see up on the services and advisory that we have with Liquid Mind. Happy to talk to you on a free consult. Let us know what your issues are. Reach out to me directly. Happy to answer any questions. I always love the feedback. So again, thank you for listening to the Visionary Chronicles. Have an awesome day. And I look forward to the next Visionary Chronicles. Thank you for listening to the Visionary Chronicles today. Really appreciate your time. Realize that you're extremely busy. And thank you to those also that have made us the number one visionary and top 50 marketing global podcasts as ranked by Feedspot. Also, thank you to those that have also purchased the visionary brand, the success formula behind the world's most visionary brands, making us an Amazon bestseller, as well as winning the Reader's Favorite Award for Best Nonfiction Marketing Genre Book, still available through all distribution channels. And also, if you like what you hear with the Visionary Chronicles podcast, please subscribe or forward this to someone you know that may enjoy what we're talking about with the Visionary Chronicles. And you'll also get a free ebook edition. And it's available through all subscriptions Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, iHeart, Google Podcasts, all available for subscription no matter what you listen to. And also with the release of the Visionary Brand, we're also just finished our master course located at the visionaryfiles.com. It's a 18 video learning courses, almost two hours of visionary lessons on what we're talking about with the visionary brand today. So if you could pass this along as well, again, it's available at thevisionaryfiles.com. Just finished that this quarter. We have over 2,100 entrepreneurs and brand leaders who have already taken the course. And also, if you have any questions on the podcast, feel free to reach out to me at Liquid Mind, where we have free meetings that we provide. Um, we also partner with startups, mid to large cap consumer brands, empowering these businesses to think differently, be different. We drive a passionate culture and to tell them to execute relentlessly. I'm available at liquidmindsite, SIT.com. Also, Brian at liquidmindsite.com and also Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Feel free to reach out to me. Always love to hear your comments and feedback. 